Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing VIP Shop stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. VIP Shop specializes in online discount sales. The company is headquartered in China and was founded in 2008. It went public in 2012 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, and Deutsche Börse. Vips is the third largest e-commerce site in China. The two larger ones are JD.com and Tmall. Tmall is a subsidiary of Alibaba. Its website name is Vip.com. Although from 2008 to 2013, its site was Vipshop.com. In 2015, it began running its own logistics and distribution system. It sells over 20,000 brands to more than 300 million users across China. There are 2,200 brands that have exclusive contracts with VIP. The company offers branded fashion, home goods, apparel, and accessories at a deep discount by using flash sale events. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 15 billion market cap. They're trading at $23 a share and they have 688 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. The growth of their free cash flow could not get better from negative 239 million up to 1.5 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's tripled from 2017 to 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grows each year from $13.5 billion to $17.8 billion. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in Chinese Yuan. If you want to convert to US dollars, you can just divide by seven. My Excel spreadsheet converts all the numbers to US dollars. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, which grows each year from 16 billion yuan up to 21 billion. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are marketing and depreciation. Gross profit minus operating expense gives you your operating income. And that more than doubled from 2017 to 2020. They paid 67 million of interest on their debt which is the lowest amount they paid in the past four years. It peaked at 160 million yuan in 2018. Then you have other income and expenses, which are usually asset impairments or the gain on a sale of an asset. Then you have earnings from equity interest. This is their earnings in investments of other companies. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which almost tripled from 2017 to 2020. You'll notice for most companies, the further down you get on the income statement, the greater the growth is. You can see the growth in revenue from 2017 to 2020 was about 40%. The growth in operating income was over 100%. The growth in net income was nearly 200%. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Their operating cash flow grows a lot from 981 million up to 11.8 billion. It did peak in 2019 at 12.3 billion. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They invest a lot in CapEx. 2.5 billion in 2017, up to 4.3 billion in 2019. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had negative free cash flow in 2017, way up to almost 10 billion yuan in 2020. Since the company had negative free cash flow, they needed to raise money to run their business. They generated 5.6 billion of capital stock in 2017. When a company issues capital stock, that increases its shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They also added 1.7 billion of debt. But it looks like in 2019, the first year they generated a lot of free cash flow, they paid down a lot of debt. They paid down over 8 billion that year. 
They did issue 1.8 billion. Let's look at the capital structure. 4.9 billion of equity, 300 million of debt. Their 95% equity, 5% debt. Their net debt is negative 2.6 billion. And their WAC is 7.29%. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 46 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $41 billion. We divide that by 688 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $60. They're trading at 23, so they're trading at a 62% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply, Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $93 a share. Five analysts priced this stock, and the average price target was $31. The low was $24, the high was $38. This is the stock price since it started trading. So it looks like the price was really driven up the first few years. Then it came down the next couple years. But just a few months ago, the stock peaked at about $45 a share. But it was cut in half since then, down to $23. This is the stock price the last year. This stock has done incredible during COVID. There was a big sell-off at this point. Even though the stock is undervalued, the stock price may not go up because a lot of people are concerned about investing in Chinese stocks. They have a low beta, 0.66, so the stock is not volatile. The stock has gone up 30% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 38%. The 52-week low was 15, the high was 46. And the stock is trading below its 200-day and 50-day moving average, so it seems to be on a downtrend. When the 200-day moving average crosses above the 50-day moving average, that's called a death cross. That's a bearish signal. This is a really liquid stock, 18 million shares traded each day. Of the 688 million shares outstanding, 448 million are on float. 57% are held by institutions, and 3.2% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 30%, while its industry went up 32%, and the market went up 46%. In the past three years, the stock has gone up 89%, its industry is 62%, and the market 63%. In the past five years, this stock has gone up 100%, its industry 259%, and a market 121%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 17%, its industry 29%, and a market 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 13%, its industry 16%, and a market 9%. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 28%, its industry 30%, and a market 12%. In the last year, their earnings grew 77%, its industry 103%, and the market 20%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd in 2012, you'd have over $400,000 today. That's a 4,100% return. It says the stock was trading at 55 cents when it IPO'd, but it was never that low. It did a 10 for 1 stock split. Anytime you look at historical stock prices, they're always split adjusted. The founder of the company owns 12% of the stock, next is Tencent Holdings, then JD.com, then the chief operating officer of the company, and their fifth biggest shareholder is BlackRock at 3.15%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 14.3 which is better than the market median and average. That means investors are paying $14.30 for $1 of earnings. They have an amazing price to sales at 0.9, much better than the market median and average. And their price to book is 3.2, also better than the median and average. Their return on invested capital is 38%. That's a really amazing ROIC. They have a really high interest coverage ratio since they have low debt. They have a great ROE at 22%. And they have a good current ratio of 1.3. Their current assets are 18 billion yuan of cash, 2.9 billion of receivables, and 5.8 billion of inventory. So the company is well capitalized. They had 1.5 billion of free cash flow and over 1 billion of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they have $2.5 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry I've done videos of 11 companies in the same industry as VIPs, and if VIPs has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're doing a lot better in all the price multiples. 
They're a little lower than average in current ratio. They're doing better in ROE, a lot better in debt. In terms of market cap, they're a lot smaller than average. They're not a small company at 15 billion market cap, but when you have Amazon at 1.6 trillion and Baba at 600 million, it really drags that average up. And they're not paying a dividend. They're using all their free cash flows to invest back into the company to grow it. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 62% discount. I think this is a great company that's going to get bigger and bigger, but I'm not sure when the stock price will go up. Whenever Americans and other countries get over the fear of buying Chinese stocks, then the stock will go up. That could be next year, it could be next month, that could be in five years. But I'm pretty confident over time this stock will go up. I rank their free cash flows 8 out of 10, their revenues 8 out of 10, and their ratios 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.